Hi, my name is Christy Peruznik, and I'm an associate professor in the Division of Public Health here at the University of Utah. I'm an epidemiologist, and I'm interested in how we measure environmental exposures that are transient in the environment. So I'm here today talking about the poster urinary bisphenol A concentrations measured in multiple consecutive days in a prospective preconception cohort. I'm the principal investigator of the HOPE study, and HOPE's an acronym. It stands for Home Observation of Periconceptional Exposures, and it's a preconception cohort. So what that means is we are recruiting couples who are planning on pregnancy. We're teaching them to know when they're in their fertile window, so when conception is likely, and then during that time, they're collecting a pile of biospecimens for us. Well, a virtual pile, because it's mostly liquids, urine and saliva. Um, the point of all of this is that we want to figure out a resource efficient way that we can do science to answer really important questions like, is bisphenol A exposure bad for people who are wanting to get pregnant? Is it bad for the man? Is it bad for the woman? Um, we want to be able to make really rational clinical recommendations to help people have healthy pregnancies. One thing that's really innovative about our study is that we're studying the couple. We're enrolling not just women in this pregnancy study, but we're also enrolling men. We feel that men have been really neglected in the realm of reproductive epidemiology. They bring an important part to the equation, can't have a pregnancy without a man. And in our study, we're showing that you really can study the couple as a unit rather than just evaluating the woman. We hope to make important contributions to public health and clinical medicine. Hi, my name is Kylie Cox and I'm the study coordinator here at the HOPE study. I started working on this project as a graduate student in the MPH program and I became the study coordinator after I graduated. This has been a really great study working with uh, both the man and the woman. It's quite interesting seeing the dynamics between each couple as we enroll them. Um, we've analyzed approximately 5,000 urine specimens so far. Uh, when we first published this poster, we only had about 800, so we have significantly increased the number. And we are still seeing, even now, that men have a higher level of urinary bisphenol A um, compared to women. And it's usually a couple nanograms per milliliter higher. Um, there's a lot of day-to-day -day variability in the urine samples between both men and women, and that's been consistent um, throughout all the specimens that we've analyzed. And um, we suspect that it's due to differences in what the men and women are eating and the quantity of food that they're consuming, although we're not quite sure exactly about that. Uh, research is still ongoing in that area.